Hey y'all, Shelly here with another tip for hospice nurses. So earlier this week, I talked about assessing a patient during a death visit for signs of life. So I thought it would be fitting today to talk about how I document that. Now, I think that it's critically important for you to protect yourself that you document very thoroughly on this full assessment in great tedious detail, document everything that you did. So I will document when I go in, I will document and what time I started the assessment, I will document auscultated over the PMI times 90 seconds, no heart tones appreciated. Auscultated over the mid-sternal region, 90 seconds, no heart tones appreciated. Palpated right and left carotid artery times 90 seconds, no pulses appreciated. Palpated right and left brachial arteries times 90 seconds, no pulses appreciated. Palpated right and left femoral arteries times 90 seconds, no pulses appreciated. Through the whole thing, great detail. What happened with the, when you looked at the eyes? Were the pupils fixed and dilated? No reaction to light. Corneal reflexes negative. Document all of this. No evidence of life. Very clearly document this. Very tedious is very long. So I do this in a shortcut. Of course, you know, I love the shortcuts. So I have this in my shortcut on my tablets as DV1, death visit one. So I do all of that. Then I put down the time I did it. I type in DV1 and it's going to pop in that whole big paragraph. And this is one time that that paragraph is never going to change. It's ex I do it exactly the same every time and it should be exactly the same. If one of those is not negative, then we're no longer doing a death visit. So, you know, it's not relevant at that point. We're doing something completely different now. So you can type in that shortcut, DB1 or whatever you want to call yours and put that all in. Please do this. I think it's so important that you do this to protect yourself, to show that you've done everything that is reasonable and prudent that you could do to assure that this patient had no signs of life. Then you're going to put in the time that you call the coroner and the time that the coroner released the body. Um, also, when you speak to the coroner, it's important, I think, that I always ask the coroner what time they're putting for the time of death. So if if sometimes the coroner is going to put the time that you tell them that you found no signs of life. Sometimes they're going to put the time you call them. Sometimes they're going to put the time they release the body. So I just ask them, and I will make a note of that. The coroner TOD is whatever the time is, because that's going to be the official time of death. And so you want it to match in your notes, across their notes, and into the death certificate if you live in a state where you call the coroner and they release. So I hope this tip was helpful. If you have any tips that you think would be helpful for hospice nurses, please let me know. I'd love to share them here. And remember, together we can change our world.